Listen, I did film and television studies at university for three years. I spent hours reading countless books and articles on subjects spanning from film all the way to television. Not a single one mentioned Hugh Grant once. I achieved the hardest qualification across any university or college ever, a 2-1 in history. Let me tell you, the only thing that I learned was that we, as a society, have a history of denying and neglecting Hugh Grant's artistic and cultural relevance, not just in this country, but in the entire world. I met Oscar at a Hugh Grant-themed event I put on at the Students' Union. It felt as though Diggory and I were the only ones there. And we agreed that there was a Hugh Grant-shaped hole in academia. We decided to put it right ourselves. We want to show people that he's an icon in acting. We want to show people he's more than just a bumbling posh guy. I'm Diggory Waite. And I'm Oscar Beardmore Gray. And, and this, this is... Taking Hugh for granted. Hello and welcome to Taking You For Granted, the podcast in which two Hugh Grant enthusiasts watch every single film starring Hugh Grant in the attempt to answer the simple question, is this film taking Hugh For Granted? Is this film good on its own or does it rely on the bumbling Brit for its acclaim? I'm Degree Waite and I'm joined as always by my colleague and fellow Hugh Grant obsessive Oscar Beardmore Grey. Oscar, how the bloody hell are you doing, mate? I'm doing very well, Diggs. I'm back. I'm back in England. He's back! Voldemort's back! back. Uh, very excited to see you, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, um, when you're out of quarantine. Indeed. I feel like it's deja vu. I, I remember looking, listening back to one of our episodes from last year where I talk about being in quarantine. And a year on, we're in the same spot. So mm. now I have quite a funny Hugh Grant anecdote. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, so my dad yesterday, I haven't seen my dad in about a year. He listened to Privileged in the car mm. a couple of days ago. And it turns out that Victoria Studd, do you remember Victoria Studd, the person that Hugh Grant said his whole career depended on because he wanted to be in privilege because of her. She attended my dad's sixth birthday party. (gasps) And according to my dad, they went to the same primary school. And according to my dad, even at the age of six, Victoria Studd was, a, you know, she was, An she was the boy. Stud. Yeah, she was a stud. Yeah. She was the girl that all the boys wanted. And I don't know what kind of party it was. I think they were dressed up in like kings and queens or something. And he could pick one person to be in his castle. And he picked Victoria Studd. And there's, oh a, pic- my God. there's a picture of them together. And he showed no it to way. me last night. So That's she- so cool. So if you're listening, Victoria, um, clearly got a thing for double barrel surnames of uh, yeah. Helena Bonham Carter's brother. So mm, Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hugh Grant, monosyllabic. You know, that won't do. That's <laughs> nothing. No double barrels, barely any syllables. Awful. But yeah, quite funny that, you know, Hugh, my dad, Victoria Studd have all got this thing going on. That's crazy. That's mad. I love that so much. I mean, are there, is there any chance that we can... Track her down. I was going to say, and be like, do you remember your king <laughs> whose castle you sat in? There we go. Another one for the universe, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're going to have to put that one in there. Speaking of the universe, we're going to have a great fun. The universe, people that don't know, is the Hugh Grant extended universe, much like the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Hugh Grant seemingly has his own universe, doesn't he? Because all of his films have interconnections. This word he uses there, these actors playing similar roles, etc. And the film we're going to talk about today, again, I feel like there's a few of them in there. There definitely is. Littered in there. It's very excited. So shall we talk about the film today? Let's talk it. Take it away, Synopsis Simon. Let's go. Sirens, directed by John Digan and released in 1994. Young Reverend Anthony, played by Hugh Grant, and his wife Estella, played by Tara Fitzgerald, travel from England to Australia to minister to their flock. A local asks Anthony to visit Norman, played by Sam Neill, an eccentric artist, whose latest work has been deemed blasphemous. Anthony must convince Norman, who also happens to live with his wife and three beautiful models, to remove the controversial painting named Crucified Venus from his show. Right, Oscar, Sirens. Yes. 1994. Something I found quite interesting about this film is that along with Four Weddings and a Funeral and Bitter Moon, they all released in the US within weeks of one another. So mm. so that's my first question. Let's say you're an American person. <laughs> you've just seen Sirens. You've seen Four Weddings and a Funeral and Bitter Moon. What would you think about the types of films that Hugh Grant did? Pornos? <laughs> 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 yeah, pretty much. You'd, yeah, you'd think he was a porn actor, but 
he did four weddings and funeral just to get a bit more cash. This yeah. film, Diggs, I mean, we I alluded to it there. It, it is a sex fest. This is just basically, the film's an hour and a half long. I would say that genuinely, an hour of it, someone has their clothes off. Yeah, someone has their kit off. It's worse than um, Game of Thrones for that. Because Game of Thrones, remember, it was a classic sex position. You know, when there was exposition going on, when characters were explaining what was happening, they'd just be like, right, well, that we, we need to do that, but it's a bit boring. So just have somebody's tits out in the background. <laughs> so have them explain the story, but whilst they're having sex. And it feels like they probably got that from this film. Um, <laughs> it's really quite incredible. But also what we keep saying is that, like, Hugh Grant's early career is just littered with sex. Yeah. And... Those of you that haven't seen it, I imagine that most of you listening, if not all of you listening, have seen Four Weddings and a Funeral. But Bitter Moon is very similar as well. And obviously it came out in the same year. Bitter Moon is very similar. And actually I wrote down that this film, I want to see what you think of this. Of Hugh Grant's films, I feel like this film is Bitter Moon meets A Man Who Went Up a Hill and Came Down a Mountain. Yeah, I agree. And maybe potentially meets, so it's like a three-way, a sort of threesome here, meets... Did you hear about the Morgans? I thought there's elements of all those three films, but I might just be saying that because we watched Did You Hear About the Morgans recently. Well, maybe you can talk me through the, yeah, the Did You Hear About the Morgans. I'm not quite sure I get yeah. that one. But mm. certainly Bitter Moon and A Man Who Went Up a Mountain and Came Down a Hill, whether it's... <laughs> yeah, yeah that fucking... one. Um, I'll run it through because some of our listeners may not have heard our episodes on or indeed definitely not seen the films of Bitter Moon and... and, and Oh, fuck me, how do I say this title? A uh, man, oh, the English mini went up a mountain, came down a hill, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> Bitter Moon, Hugh Grant's on a boat. He meets this old man, you know, in a wheelchair who basically tells him all about how, you know, he met this woman, they had this passionate life. And eventually Hugh Grant's a bit, a bit repressed, but throughout the film slowly comes out of his shell and shows his sort of like sexy, but devilish side. One of the big things about differences, to be fair, mm. is that Hugh doesn't, get any of the sex in this film he is like Mm. he is playing a different character isn't he he's a repressed but some in some ways i think he thinks himself of himself as a sort of forward-thinking pioneer definitely priest he's he's a priest and he he basically goes into this you know world that he's incredibly uncomfortable in Mm. where everyone has got their clothes off and he can't deal with it so explain this story to me again have i got this right sam neill plays a painter who is like a He's, he paints a lot of sexy paintings. He's an erotic painter. That, yeah, let's be real. And some of Sam Neill's paintings are going to be chosen for some big exhibition in the UK. Hugh Grant is this, you know, the original hot priest. Fuck Andrew Scott exactly, in Fleabag. He is the original <laughs> hot priest. He basically goes to Sam Neill's house to then be in like... In Australia. In Australia to be like, yo, mate, maybe don't submit the paintings you're going to submit. Is that the film? <laughs> It basically is the film. That's mad. It That's is. not a film. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if you've done done the background here, Diggs, but it's based on a true, a re- mm. some somewhat of a true story. There was an Australian painter in the 1920s who was very controversial because of his erotica, basically. And mm. and then I think some English priest may have come over and sort of <laughs> wagged his finger at him. Yeah, I'm not sure the bit about the priest's wife then becoming part of no. his cult was part of the story. So that's kind of similar to this film. Uh, the reason it's similar to An Englishman Who Went Up a Hill Came Down a Mountain is because, similar to that, when they come to this film to Australia, it's like in that film when they go to that Welsh town. It's very 100%, much... 100%. Like when they go into the pub, everyone looks around their shoulder and they're like, who the hell is this bloke? Or yeah, in, in yeah. this case, who the hell are you, mate? <laughs> yeah. So, or, or what is it? He's like, get fucked. Um, <laughs> yeah, that guy, this old man who can only say two words. Um and of course, Tara Fitzgerald. Exactly. Tara Fitzgerald, who my dad laughed at me earlier because he was like, oh, who's in it? Because I said to him, listen, he came in my room and I was like, look, listen, I'm going to level with you, dad. There is, There are naked ladies on screen. There's going to be a lot. Every time you come in here, you're going to see that. <laughs> I'm, you can see where my hands are. Nothing strange is going on. And he was like, oh, I told the film to him. And he was, like, and I said that Ella Fitzgerald was in it. And he laughed his ass off because obviously she's a famous jazz singer anyway. <laughs> Tara Fitzgerald is in uh, that as well. So that that's the similar sort of vibe. And also that's a bit sexy but as well. What, what did you see about this film, which, which was similar? And did you hear about the Morgans? The reason I thought it was like, did you hear about the Morgans? Is for exactly the same reason. Because in that film, Hugh Grant and... Sarah Jessica Parker have to go 
to Wyoming in the middle of nowhere. And they're also like fish out of water, but they have the element of exotic animals. And in this film, there's a couple of exotic animals there too that really just... A hundred percent. It was like... It. Yeah. Now you said it, bang on... You hit it <laughs> yeah. on the head because I did think that, you know, okay, we get it. The film is in Australia. We don't have to bring out the koalas, the kangaroos, the dingoes, <laughs> Was the there wombats, a wombat in there? Yeah, the wombat. The snakes. Every yeah. single thing that you could think of is this. Yeah. Like, it, it was almost like you could imagine it. They had like a cage koala and, you know, they're just the cars coming along and they go, off you go, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit like, oh, the film's set in Australia. Oh, bloody hell, we'll have to get a kangaroo then. We'll have to get a kangaroo. Otherwise, people won't believe that we're there. <laughs> the kangaroo bit was so quick as well. It was just like, it, it, again, it's almost like, you know, she's, I don't know, she was like walking off something. They just basically threw a kangaroo at her and just went past and she's like, oh. Because, like I say, in Did You Hear About the Morgans, you know, they, they come up against this bear and there's another few things to be like, look, we're really in. The middle of the Midwest, yes. Exactly, exactly. And dinner's ready. Oh, that's right. I was sent to fetch you. Hmm. Huh. I don't like people thinking that I'm like the other models. Well, I'm actually working here as a maid, you see, but when Mr Lindsay asked me if I'd like to pose for him and I said that I would if I could keep my clothes on. Well, I don't think there's anything sinful about the human body. In fact, there's a whole tradition of religious painting in which the nude frequently appears. I think it's just a question of um, how the artist uses the body that's important. So... Do you think Mr. Lindsay's paintings are rude? Mmm. Some I think are profane. Oh. Oh, that's good. I thought Hugh Grant was great in this film. Completely agree. I think he really had some subtlety in this character. And, you know, he talked a little bit about it and read up. And, and I think he is right in saying that the idea of this film is kind of like, where do you fall in this scale between being highly repressed kind of clergyman and being sort of you know very forward thinking and sexually liberal mm. and Hugh Grant is playing this priest and I reckon the character thinks that he is he isn't that repressed really he's actually quite he's quite a cool priest you know he's good looking he's young he's got a nice hair he's got a quite a good looking wife mm. I think he said in, in in a quote that he's the kind of guy that maybe after a couple of sherries he might start you know talking a little bit about some sexual innuendo. Mm. But he's put in this place where he is just completely out of his depth. Mm. And he realises that actually he is hugely repressed, sexually frustrated, quite insecure about it. Mm. And, and, and I think becomes quite jealous of the fact that his wife is able to actually gain some kind of rapport with these very glamorous models who are around the place naked. And I think, I think actually getting that across on screen is mm. quite difficult and he hits all those subtle notes quite well and is able to bring a little bit of comedy to it at the same time. Absolutely. I, I think that's so important to say as well because the importance of cinema is that you're watching it as well. So show us. like, And the fact that Hugh Grant in his performance can convey those subtleties, like you say, like the jealousy and stuff, because I, I think he shows somehow, like even maybe his faith falters slightly that maybe he's a bit like, he's a bit weighed down by the weight of like, oh, you know, I can't really join you in, in being here and letting myself go a bit because I feel like I need to be, you know, Mr. Hot Priest. I need mm. to be a good boy. But like I say, we don't hear him say that, but that is all conveyed in his performance. So you're absolutely right. And he makes it funny somehow. Brilliant. And also, you know, I feel like there is some a little bit of depth to the characters in the sense that, he doesn't have the emotions and he's clearly is so repressed that he can't like he can't express his like desires with her and you know he there's that mm. scene where he's like they're having sex and he's like I'm sorry I'm so nice here. it's alright that will be asleep <laughs> it's terrible it's his worst sex scene ever <laughs> it's awful it's, yeah it's not great it's really not good but he still says he does manage to spit out that he loves her and I think he does mm. really care about Tara Fitzgerald, the, mm. its character in this film. Mm. But he isn't able, like, you know, he's it's the 1920s and he's a priest. He isn't able to show that to her. Whereas these lovely ladies are, you know, happy to sort of go butt naked everywhere and express their feelings. Do you know what? That's so true. And you're so right. That's really touched me what you just said then. He does really care about her. And the fact that his liberal side... I suppose does come out slightly at the end. I suppose we're skipping now, but I think it really accentuates the point you just made, which is such a good one, is that 
Tara Fitzgerald and the other ladies. It's a highly sensual scene. They're all in the water. They're all rubbing each other. You're getting slippery, aren't you? What do you mean? I know somewhere where it should be really ticklish. And this is the first time that Tara Fitzgerald, they keep sort of, these women keep tempting her, but she never quite joins them. And then now they're all rubbing each other. And now finally Tara Fitzgerald joins them and they're, it's all really sensual. Hugh Grant, he comes bounding across these rocks. He leaps from rock to rock with the grace of a mountain goat. And spots them. And in classic, again, like, again, accentuate your point so well. He can't speak his mind. He sees this. He doesn't. It like stopped them or anything. He goes back and waits for her to come back. Eventually she does, and he's sort of like, Oh, where were you? And she's like, I was at the pub, and he's like, mm, I know you weren't. But he never he never really, you know, has a go at her or really challenges her on that. And at the very end of the film, she says to him, Oh, we, we need to have a chat, because I've done some stuff. And at this point, she really has done some stuff, some other stuff. Mm. And he's like, Listen. When I use I think I think some things are best left unsaid. But that means we'll always be strangers. No, not really. Only small parts of us. The bad parts? No, I think it's, I think it's good to have a few secrets. And that way in 50 years' time we'll still be able to surprise each other. Perhaps you're right. I love you, Piglet. The fact that he's like, listen, I know you've done some stuff here, but... I want to keep you around as long as you're happy to have like done it or whatever. We'll see how it goes. But it's it's and it's weirdly in its own way, it's not Hollywood. It's not perfect. Mm. It's, but it's kind of fucking beautiful. And <laughs> you're so right. It, it really it well, I, is. And and so like you say, he shows his sort of like cool liberal priest side there, but also because he actually cares about her and actually mm. like cares about how she feels. It's well, kind of beautiful. I th- I agree. And I think actually the the very last scene of the film, um, they're on the train together. And mm-hmm. Tara is learned a few lessons from her lady friends and starts touching Hugh in strange places while there's people in, in his carriage, like asleep. Yeah. And I think that actually encapsulates what you're saying quite well. I think it shows that the, the particular place they were in was a bit of a test and maybe Tara failed the test and Hugh in some ways failed the test as well because he was just a bit square. Mm. Perhaps they've come out of it stronger and they kind of look at each other in a way which is kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'm happy. I know, you know, we're, we're, we're good here. Um, mm. I'm going to forgive you for all that dodgy stuff that you did back there. But, mm. you know, water under the bridge. And, and I think that is quite poignant. So, yeah. and, and, you know, I, Tara and Hugh, they had a thing going. They had a thing going. Yeah. I like it. I, they, I think they made Came Up a Hill, Went Down a Mountain, a, a half decent film too. Yeah. I wonder, I mean, that's a good question that we should ask him when we eventually do get that interview. You know, we should be like, obviously, people have asked you about all your leading ladies, but what about Tara, dude? <laughs> I know. Like, we love <laughs> the, the film. The with one Tara. that got away from him, surely. Exactly. Yeah, surely. I mean, that girl in the rowing with the wind one. I mean, she was cool. I like Liz Hurley. She was wicked. But what about Tara, man? She's the, she's it's just, wicked. It's just a shame that um, Sam Neill couldn't save the film in restoration. I mean, oh, we talk about Christ. that. That is the other connection, of course, is that Sam Neill yeah. stars in this film. Obviously, huge, huge movie star. Mm. Jurassic mm. Park and all that. Yeah. Is also in restoration with uh, Hugh Grant and Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. That was a real... <laughs> that was a real flop you know what the beauty of this film is it's a bit like bitter moon it's a little bit like lair of the white worm is that all these big names Mm. hugh grant etc will look back at this film 25 years after it happened and think bloody hell that was a good time i think hugh himself said that this was one of his favorite shoots ever because they were in australia for this in new south wales and this what looks like to be an absolutely beautiful place i think it's called the blue mountains Mm. and apparently hugh said that it was just a fantastic time they were in a hotel in the blue mountains with three glamorous women Mm. (laughs) or more than three glamorous women having a party every night with a load of koalas and kangaroos i mean that sounds incredible i'm so glad you told me that because what we know about Hugh Grant on film sets is that he's miserable. Mm. He's grumpy and annoyed the whole time. So I'm so glad that's the case. Taking he for granted. Taking he for granted. Taking he for granted. What did you think, lads? Were they taking he for granted? So Diggs, another one in the bag. And I'm intrigued to hear your thoughts on this one. I really am. Sirens, are we taking you for granted? Mate, great question. Thank you for asking. 
I was caught in two minds about this because I don't know. I mean, there's some weird things about it, but I remember literally I watched it a few hours ago and there was just, just that bit at the end that we were talking about earlier where they had that conversation. They sort of came to this interesting resolution where Hugh Grant was like, I'm sort of aware of the things you've done, but let's not talk about them, whatever. And, you know, I'll accept you anyway. And I sort of was sat there and I did laugh like this. I was going, eh, 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 eh. <laughs> and, I, and I felt this, I just felt so, I don't know, something felt warm and I felt pleased. And I was like, mm. and I don't know, I was, I, was, I was charmed. That's the word. I was charmed. And you I thought were to charmed. Myself, yeah, you've charmed me. You charmed me. And I just thought, you know what? Yeah, th- th- that's it. Th- it's done it. And so the film ends with a shot of, I guess, on a drone or a helicopter, all the women of the film standing there naked, just waving at the camera. Literally, there is a helicopter shot of all fi- <laughs> four, five girls in this film, butt naked on yeah. like some, you know, this incredible view. And they're all just like posing there. It must have been absolutely hilarious to film. What a fitting end to a very strange film. And obviously is going to get my seal of approval. It was extremely watchable. It was weird and wacky and wonderful. Hugh Grant put in a great performance. And like we said, it had some serious nuance to it. Hmm. Human intrigue nuance. I am going to say this film was not taking you for granted. What about you? Brilliant. I'm going to join you, Diggs. I mean, I don't think this kind of film would be made anymore. And it is just a bit out there. Mm. We've rated films like kind of -of run-of-the-mill, rom-com-y, just so bland and unoriginal. Mm that those films for me are taking you for granted because they don't they don't try anything different they don't try to be rogue or cool or interesting whereas this film okay the story is wacky and it's pretty terrible it is a good watch it's hilarious mm. and it's something different and and i actually think that it is one of hugh's more solid performances from the 90s and i think definitely now it is just reminding me i think this performance type of performance really pitted himself well for things like About a Boy. Because I think Mm. he is really good at subtle and nuanced comedy playing a slightly more complex character than meets the eye. And I think Mm. that that is this guy as well in this film. And for that reason, we can't take you for granted here. We can't. We simply can't. There's no way. Even if you wanted us to, I couldn't. I wouldn't. I'd recommend this film. I'd recommend it. Go and watch it. Check it out. I mean, unfortunately, unlike the last couple that we've watched that have all been on YouTube, this will not be on YouTube. YouTube no. will not let this one fly. You might find it on a on a yeah. porn hub. Yes, exactly. You might or so, yeah, a porn streaming service. Not. I don't want to get sent. You know, porn hub will be like, oh, you're giving us a shout out. We'll send you some free merchandise. I'll be like, ah, keep it, keep that. I'd rather have a Kit Kat. Kit Kats. Do you want to send me Kit Kats instead? I'll give you. The I'll send you a Kit Kat. Reach that we've got. Oh, thanks, man. That'd be great, ladies and gentlemen. It's been an absolute pleasure once again. I mean, what fun. This is what it's all about. I know I I say this every episode, but this is what it's all about. It is all about this thing. You know, we've had... My mum keeps on saying to me, she's like, God, it sounded like another terrible film you watched last week. (laughs) Um, But this one, no. This one was a good one. I feel like you're right. And yet somehow we actually don't have that many films where we've been like, that's been taken for granted for sure. Even though we have watched a lot of trash films, but I feel like we've come away from most of them and gone, that's all right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Check out the leaderboard if you haven't seen it on our Instagram. We've got a we've yeah. got a running list of uh, where we are. And we're running out of space on the not taking you for granted side, which is a good sign. Yeah, that is that is a great sign. We're actually we're gonna to to need to make sure these next few films suck. We have to <laughs> like watch them in a bad mood. Make sure that we've woken up on the wrong side of the bed. Might be hard uh, though, mate, because we're gonna to be together probably for the next couple. Yeah, exactly. Bloody hell, maybe we should have a beer. Pop, popcorn <laughs> night, mate. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, my God. What a buzz. Yes, we need to think about that. Yes. Now we can start doing more together. That'd be That's very, very exciting. And we can do a few more similar episodes like the one that we did for... Lady and the Highwayman. Lady and the Highwayman. That was fun where we like, you know, we'll watch a little bit, chat about our thoughts, watch a little bit. It was great. Mm. We'll do that. So, guys, if you want to you know see us do that and also when we're together there's gonna be a lot more pics of us together we'll put up on our social channels and whatnot so you know make sure you're following us there at taking hugh on twitter at taking you for granted on facebook and instagram make sure you're following us there make sure you're subscribed to this podcast and also i haven't thought about this leave us a rating or review wherever you're listening yeah we love we love that stuff we we, love we, that we stuff. look at every single one every message yeah we appreciate every one of you 
you. But keep sending them in, and we'll and you know if there's any really nice ones, we'll read them out on the show. So, you know, if you said there's a really horrible one, we won't read it out. And if you can tra- track down Victoria's stud for us, that'd be great as well. <laughs> Do some digging. I'm serious. Thanks so much for listening, everyone, and we'll see you next time. See ya, fam, fam, the Hugh Grant fam. Bye. Bye. Taking Hugh for Granted is produced, edited and presented by Diggory Waite and Oscar Beardmore Gray. The producers of Taking Hugh for Granted would like to state that this podcast is in no way associated with the actor Hugh John Mungo Grant, nor does it endorse his views or represent him in any way. Instead, by creating this podcast, Oscar and Diggory hope to celebrate Hugh's illustrious career, reliving his old classics and shedding light on some of his hidden gems. Hugh. If you're listening, we hope you approve.